In this video, I want to talk about transformations of exponential functions. So that is translations, up, down, left, right, stretches, compressions, and reflections. Now, we don't look at stretches and compressions so much with exponential functions simply because they're really hard to see. Um, but certainly the vertical and horizontal movements and uh, reflections are a lot easier to see. We're going to start by taking a look at a graph of f and g, where g is a transformation of f. Now we know what f is. f of x is 10 times 1.05 to the x power. So we know from everything we know about exponential functions that, that the y-intercept of the graph is 0, 10. We know the graph is increasing from that. We know there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. And we know it's an exponential growth curve. The graph of g looks like it's just a movement down of f. And if we plot a couple points on g, it looks like it goes through 0, 0, which would be 10 units down from f. So it might be worth trying to figure out if that occurs at other places as well. So let's look at an x value of 20. The g value looks like it is between 10 and 20. I would say maybe a little over halfway up. So let's say 20, comma, maybe 16. If we look at the f value at 20, I would say it's just over halfway between 20 and 30. So this one might be 20, comma, 26. And so that, that's also space 10 apart. What's interesting about these curves is there's an optical illusion involved where as you move further and further away from the center, it can look like the graph is actually closer together than it is. So it's a good idea to actually plot a couple points and make sure that you know what the graph is at certain points. So for example, at, at x equals 35, we have a y value on the f graph of about maybe 56. So 35 comma 56. This looks like it is a lot closer to the g graph, but if we actually plot the point on the g graph, that point is at 35 comma, and then it is actually 10 units below the other one at 46. So even though they look like they're actually closer together, they aren't any closer together than the points were at x equals 20 or at x equals 0. So it seems like the graph of g is simply the graph of f moved down by 10, and that would be g of x equals f of x, and then minus 10 on the outside of f of x. Another way to write that would be g of x equals 10 times 1.05 to the x minus 10 on the outside. Let's go over to Desmos and just double check that one. So here we have the graph of f of x, got a graph of g of x, which is just equal to f of x, and now I'm going to subtract 10 from it. And there we go, we've got the graph that we want. All right, now your turn. It's the same graph of f of x shown below and a transformation that gives you g. Now I'll just describe g and then let you give it a try. In this case, g is a decreasing graph. It goes through the same y-intercept as f of 0, 10. And we said that f had a point at 20, 26. It looks like, in this case, g has a graph at negative 20, 26. So that gives you a little clue here. So pause the video and give this one a try. Okay, we're back. Hopefully you looked at this and thought to yourself, self that is a horizontal reflection because that's what it is. And a horizontal reflection we write by replacing the x value with a negative x. And so we would write that as g of x equals f of negative x or g of x equals 10 times 1.05 to the negative x power. Let's just double check that over in Desmos. We've got our graph of f and we've got our graph of g all ready to go. I'm going to replace the x inside of f of x with negative x. And there we get the horizontal reflection that we wanted to have. We could also double check this by going to the original function. And instead of x in the original function, we could write negative x. And you'll see you get the exact same graph that way as well. 
All right, I have a problem for you to try. I want you to list a whole bunch of properties for this function. It's f of x equals 200 times left parentheses 0 0.8 right parentheses to the x power and then plus 100 outside of the power. So pause this video and give it a try. List as many properties as you can. Okay, we're back. One thing to notice about this function is we do have this kind of basic exponential form in the 200 times 0.8 to the x part. But then there's a plus 100 on the outside of that. And that plus 100 on the outside of it does something to the graph. It moves the graph up 100 units. Let's just go over to Desmos and take a look at what that looks like. Now, if I plot that in Desmos on a regular kind of home screen, I'm not even going to see it. So I'm going to need to zoom out a ways to find this graph. And if you zoom out a ways to find the graph, what you're going to see is that there's a very distinct horizontal asymptote at what looks like it might be 100 now. We will need to zoom in to kind of verify that. But we also know that the graph used to have a horizontal asymptote at 0. So moving it up to 100 would make sense since we think we added 100 to the original graph. This is a decreasing curve because the b value is 0.8. Its initial value would have been 200 except that we added 100 to it. So now its initial value we would expect to see at 300. Let's just double check that. And sure enough, the initial value is now at 0, 0,300 and instead of the 200 we would expect without the vertical translation. So let's go over to our notes and actually answer some of these questions. So first of all, is it growth or decay? It's decay. And the reason why is because 0 0.8 is between 0 and 1. The growth factor here is 0 0.8. The rate of growth is actually a negative 20%. The initial value of the graph we found to be 300, or we could write that as a point 0, 0,300. The horizontal asymptote we found to be y equals 100. The domain is still negative infinity to infinity. But now the range, if the horizontal asymptote's at 100, then the range is from 100 to infinity. The y-intercept is the same as the initial value, so that's 300 or 0, 0,300. So now technically only one of these is the best answer. So the initial value is 300, the y-intercept is 0, 0,300. That's the better of the two answers for each question. X-intercepts, well, we don't have any of those, none. And then is it increasing or decreasing? Well, it's a decay function, which means it's decreasing. In fact, it's decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to infinity. All right, our final problem. I'd like you to graph two functions in Desmos and then describe what you see. So the two functions are f of x equals 10 times 0.8 to the x power and g of x equals 10 times 1.25 to the negative x power. Let's go take a look. I'm starting with the graph of f of x. It's a decreasing function, exponential decay with a y-intercept of 10. Let me include the graph of g of x now. And g of x is actually the exact same graph. Well, why would that be? Let's go take a closer look at it. So in terms of describing what we see, um, these are the same graph. We know that f of x was decay. We know that means it's decreasing and we know its initial value was 10. Now g of x, if you look at it and don't pay close attention, you would say that the initial value is 10, which it is, and that it was growth or increasing. But the problem is that this has undergone a transformation. It's there in the exponent. The x was replaced with negative x. Now we did all of that work with negative exponents, and one of the reasons why is to show that sometimes the negative exponent actually affects the graph in a somewhat surprising way. Let's just look at that 1.25 to the negative x. That's the same thing as 1 and a quarter, or 5 fourths, to the negative x. Well, a negative exponent is a cry for help, right? It says, move me. So the 5 fourths needs to be rewritten as 4 fifths, and then it would be to the positive x power. 
Well, 4 fifths as a decimal is 0 0.8. So that would be 0 0.8 to the x power, which is the secret to why 1.25 to the negative x, which is the same as 5 fourths to the negative x, ends up coming out 0.8 to the x. They are actually the same graph. So they are both decay, they are both decreasing, and they both have a y-intercept of 10 because they are the same. So you do need to be very careful to catch when there is a transformation of some kind going on in the graph because that will alter the basic properties you might otherwise just jump at. Always a good idea to graph something to just make sure and always a good idea to do some critical thinking about it as well.